All right, Paul, so you've shown us that this missing star weighs about the same as our sun. Yes, yeah, so we've got something dark going around opposite in the orbit, and it's pretty heavy. And our sun is pretty bright, so at the distance of Sirius, which is less than 10 light years, the sun would be actually easily visible with our naked eye. So where is it? So we need something with the weight of the sun, yep. but much fainter. Now, obviously, things to go and try and look much harder. Um, it wasn't possible with Bessel's telescope, the brilliant though it was. But 50 years later, the best time is every 50 years when these things are at the furthest part of point apart. 50 years later, the crown of telescope engineering had passed from the Germans to the Americans. Right, and so Alvin Clark and Sons were out testing an 18 and a half inch refractor, the largest refractor of the day. And by accident, they were looking at Sirius just to check out the lenses, and they saw the little companion. And they didn't really realize what was going on. But just down the road, this was all happening in Massachusetts, just down the road at Harvard College Observatory, using the great 15-inch refractor that's still on top of Harvard College Observatory, and I've had the opportunity to actually use, uh, it was spotted again by an astronomer, and they immediately realized the significance of the find, that there, this star had been identified, uh, but it was really faint. It was about a thousand times fainter than Sirius. Yeah, I mean, here's a modern Hubble Space Telescope image. So there's Sirius, very, very bright, and there is what's called Sirius B. So the thing that weighs the mass of the sun is a thousand times fainter. So this is about two solar masses. That's about one solar mass, a factor of about two in mass, but a factor of a thousand in brightness. And you know, one of the I ironic things here in the story is, is that these little things you see here is part of an airy function that describes diffraction. And we mathematically write those down as Bessel functions. So Bessel came back in a way that probably he didn't expect. Yep. So what is it that is a thousand times fainter than Sirius but still weighs the mass of the sun? Well, how do you make something faint? Well, it, the easiest way I know how to make things faint is to make it cool. Because things that are hot, which uh, they glow, the hotter you make something, the more it glows. It actually comes up with a law we call the black body law. And so it, it's a very high power, it's the fourth power of the temperature, tells you uh, how luminous something is. So we would expect this to be very cool. Yes, yeah, so that was the expectation. The idea was that this was a star, but a very cool one. Probably not that different in size from Sirius, physical size, yep. but much cooler. You have to bear in mind, it looks like the star is about this big. That's not really the size of it. Yep. It's actually far smaller than a pixel, as is this one. All this is just a spreading out due to the immense amount of light. So both these things look like dots. Yep. Um, so, yep, a hot Sirius is about 10,000 degrees, and this one, to be so much fainter, must be a lot cooler. Yep. That's what people thought until uh, a few decades later. Um, yet more powerful telescope. Now we had the Hooker 100-inch um, reflecting telescope at Mount Wilson in California, the biggest telescope in the world. Right, and that was because the Clarks made the largest refractor at Yerkes, a 40-inch, and that sort of made the lenses start sagging and it didn't work very well, and so you could do better with a giant mirrored telescope. And they um, maybe we measure the spectrum of Sirius B, this little thing. This, this image is not quite to scale. Actually, both these things would be much smaller relative to their separation. And, and it takes 50 years to do this, so it's a, a little seconds. easier to catch than yes. it looks like on this diagram. Um, but when you look at it, the spectrum, they found that in fact, far from being cool, it was hot. In oh. fact, hotter than Sirius A. So we knew it was very blue color, had the spectral features that indicate heat. So this is a thousand times less luminous than Sirius A, but had a surface temperature of about 25,000 degrees, but Sirius only 10,000 degrees. So that's against my, you know, our, my initial reaction because, as I told you earlier, that the luminosity of an object is its area. This is of a, a black body of things that are hot and glowing, like your, for example, a, a hot, you know, poker or something that you get glowing red hot is the area, so 4 pi r squared, the surface area of the sphere, times the Stefan-Boltzmann constant, times the temperature to the fourth power. And so that would mean that the area would have to be tiny in order to make this thing a thousand times less luminous. It seems impossible. I mean, this would have to be so small, given it's so hot. Yeah. Every square meter of the surface has huge amounts of power. So to be as faint as it is, it would have to be absolutely microscopic. In fact, let's go and work out how small it would have to be. 